I'm Rajiv Jalan. I'm a professor of hepatology at UCL, and I'm taking over as the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Hepatology from January 2015. It's a fantastic occasion that uh, the Journal of Hepatology has now achieved its 30-year milestone, which is obviously huge, uh, which coincides really with 50 years of easel. And, um, you know, during this time, we've made an enormous amount of progress in hepatology, which is still uh, a specialty which is growing. And I think, you know, it'd be fair to say that we have finally come of age where we have real treatments for real patients where we can start to make real differences to their lives. So I think, you know, uh, this supplement will see where, where we are, where we have come from, and where we will go to in the next 10, 15 years in terms of making the lives of patients better. So uh, we have been able to assemble uh, the best minds, authors, writers, scientists, and clinicians from around the world to put this supplement together to define exactly those issues about where we have come from, where we are at the, pa at the present point, and where we can hope to get to in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Hepatology has always uh, been the Cinderella specialty because it's an organ that was very difficult to study. You know, it was sort of linked with the gut and therefore developments in hepatology has lagged behind many specialties such as the gut, gastroenterology, uh, cardiology, uh, diabetes, and so on. But with the improvements in our uh, techniques to understand biology, to imaging, and so on, we now can study this organ, and uh, this ability to study this organ better and the development of new molecular techniques gives us a real opportunity to start to develop treatments that are meaningful. You know, one thinks about uh, the reasons why a patient develops liver failure and uh, chronic liver disease, and I think that there's been a massive degree of understanding in terms of why injury to the liver leads to scarring the development of cirrhosis and its complications. And so one section of the journal is going to address that whole aspect of um, why does a patient with liver injury develop cirrhosis. Then there is this whole issue about alcoholism, which is very, very topical and very important. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is increasing across the board and across uh, in the world. And recently, we now even see increases in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease uh, in China, uh, which is uh, increasing at an alarming rate. And of course, the big news that has occurred in the last 10 years is our understanding of hepatitis C. And uh, there's a lot of focus on new treatments. And we think that it's now going to be a curable disease and a section of the journal looks at that. The other elements uh, really relate to hepatitis B, for which we have new treatments, new strategies in terms of how we'll get rid of the virus in the future. Liver cancer is becoming more and more of a problem because uh, of the large prevalence of cirrhotic liver disease and our understanding that fatty liver can lead to cirrhosis. So there is a section dedicated to hepatocellular carcinoma. One of the things that runs throughout the whole uh, journal is this uh, sense that we want to understand what we have learned and how we're going to translate that learning into better treatments and lives for our patients. One of the biggest uh, elements that we have got to battle with, and I think that I don't think as hepatologists we will solve it, and uh, we therefore need to work with, uh, with the hearts and minds uh, such as uh, media people and so on is to get rid of the stigma that is associated with liver disease. And unless we are able to interact with the society to say that uh, liver disease is very much 
you know, like any other disease, uh, we are not going to make a huge difference. We've got, if we are able to get rid of the stigma, then we have a real opportunity because at that point, um, we can start to engage with the governments to increase the funding for liver disease uh, research and for treatment of patients with liver disease, which is very limited. And, you know, patients are dying all over the world. It's probably the only disease, uh, the deaths from which are increasing exponentially compared with any other chronic disease that we have. So therefore, you know, we have got to interact at many, many, many levels if we are going to make a difference. So at the societal level, at the governmental level, at the level of uh, World Health Organizations, and of course, uh, uh, to increase the funding for this disease, both in terms of research and also in terms of uh, delivery of new treatments to the patients. I think it's very exciting. I think, you know, whoever we have asked from around the world to contribute have come forward and have uh, written the most uh, vibrant uh, articles that you'll find in the supplement. You know, it'll answer, hopefully, the questions that you have in relation to these individual areas and will give you an insight into what the future holds in terms of the unmet needs and opportunities and therefore the challenges that hepatology faces as we move forward. So I welcome you to uh, pick up this supplement and glance through it and I hope you enjoy it.